Hi guys, Horse Trader here. In this video, we're going to look at our second coding example, and it's going to be covering the API operation for list event types. What this is going to do is return a JSON structure detailing all the event types, the IDs associated to that unique event type, and also the names. From the structure, we can be able to access different elements, for loop through it, conditional logic, etc., to try and build some functionality for an application further down the road. So let's get stuck into it. From our previous video, we're going to be using a non-interactive login. And again, we're just going to make a re uh, request, sorry. And then we're going to get our so uh, session token from that. And here you can see I've successfully logged in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be contacting a different um, API endpoint. As you saw before, we were going to the cert login. This time we're going to be accessing the betting URL. So here we see betting JSON. So from the A API documentation, we see this is the kind of body we're going to be sending. Again, we have a JSON, sports API, list event types, that's the important part, and then the parameters. So we have no filters. It's going to be the header. Again, this is from my previous video. We get our session ID up here. We got our app key up here. Now we're actually going to populate the request. We're going to pass it this bet URL. This is where we're going to make the request to. Data is just this encoded. And then we're of course passing headers so that the API can identify who is making this request. So if we go ahead now, we're going to have to access our response from the request. And let's have a look at the JSON structure. So here we can see these are all the event types available to us. So if you want to access this, if you guys are familiar with list notation or DIX, for short for dictionaries, we can use the indexes from there. So we're going to first access result. So we're stepping into this. And again, it's a nice ordered response. Then again, we can go further. If we want to look at element zero, event type, which is going to be this element, zero, one, two, three, etc. And then in here, we can go even further and say, okay, event type. And then again, we can then grab the ID or the name. So if we want to go soccer ID is equal to this. And we'll go soccer name is equal to this. And then we can go soccer ID, soccer name. So that's just some of the ways we can access some of the elements of the structure. Let's have a look at market count. For example, again, we can go to a different one. We'll go to the fifth index Let's see what this actually is event type ID we'll go name actually oh rugby league yep it's interesting to note that the ID here is indexed from one whereas the actual uh, index of the array we're trying to access is indexed from zero. So if you want to access ID one here, you're actually going to have to write zero in here, etc. So for example, if you wanted to loop through this, we could go for item in event types result. 
So now our item is going to refer to the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for example. We can go print item event type name. And that should work. Oh, what have I done? There we go. We're then printing through. So again, you can add some conditions here. We can go, I don't know. We can go if there is ball in the name, print it. Oh, I keep filling these columns I'm using too many other different languages. So again, this is really basic functionality, but there can be a lot of different things you could use this for. For example, if you were using um, a user input and you wanted to make sure that they can only access certain events, you could use this kind of conditional logic. So you don't be able to return IDs for these given names. And there's many other different cases, but you know, that's up to how you want to structure your program, what you want it to do. I'll be continuing to create videos showing the different API operations and how to utilize them together to fulfill desirable functionality for your large applications. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. Please share, like, subscribe, and comment with what content you want me to cover in future videos.